How's it going, everyone? I am sitting on the floor again, which means it's time for arts and crafts. So I was holding on to one of these porcupine quills the other day, and I was talking to my partner, and I I said, these feel like feathers almost. And as soon as I said that, I, I said then, wow, porcupine quill. And then I just saw this image in my head of myself constructing a, a quill pin out of a porcupine quill. And the uses for that are, are myriad, as I'm sure you can imagine a few at least, um, one of which is writing protection spells with. And um, yeah, I, I wanted to try to, to try that out um, just on camera here. Um, with as little editing as possible, just sort of try this with you guys sitting right here so you can see some of the process. Um, I have a very rudimentary sketch of what I remember of how to make a, a quill pen. I, um, I looked into calligraphy for about three minutes a few years ago. And what I remember is there's a few things that need to happen to the quill before it'll actually um, write and hold ink. And so I've, I've sort of drawn this process out here. Um, the first thing that has to happen, if I remember this correctly, someone out there is probably cracking up, uh, both at how rudimentary the sketch is, but also how incorrect this design is. But the first thing that you have to do is cut it perhaps even more at a steep angle than this. And if you can even try to get this little swoop here. So you first cut it and then you get the swoop and then you're supposed to, I believe, cut this tip off right here. And then you cut a line into the pen so that the ink can actually dribble out. And then once you've cut that groove, you then have to cut to make it flat so that when you're writing, you're not cutting the paper. And then you end up with this, this shape here. So we are going to try to do this on camera. I've got some ink uh, from when I, like I said, when I, I wanted to practice calligraphy and then realized I didn't want to devote the time or sacrifice the time from other things I was already doing. I ended up just keeping the ink as a spell component. Uh, so I still have it in my my spell chest over there. Um, so yeah, let's let's try and see if we can um, do this. I've got a little pocket knife here, and yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and do this. Um, so first, I'm gonna decide where on the quill I want to make the cut, and I want it to be about right here. So first what I'm going to do is, is make this notch in the quill. And then I'm going to just slice it. And that actually seems to be working surprisingly well. Now, of course, use safety when you're doing this. Um, all right. So I didn't find a hollow point yet. And it's possible. These, these sound hollow, but it's possible that they're not. I, you know, I'm surprised by nature all the time. So let's cut a little bit more deeply. And I'm actually surprised to find that these are actually not hollow. Um, it's going to be probably hard to see here. Um, but it's, it's, there's like a pith to it. So I'm going to try to work around that. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to try to make this work. And um, even if this doesn't work as a quill per se, you can still write with this. If you dip it in ink, it will it will write. So worst case scenario, I've got about five or six of these things. I'm willing to sacrifice a couple. But um, yeah, I've got a nice little little uh, groove cut in right there. So what I'm actually going to do is take this other quill very carefully and see if I can't get into that pith which it looks like I can. So I'm actually going to hollow this out with another quill very carefully so that it will actually hold some, some ink. So yeah, being very careful 
and using the non-sharp end as well to sort of work as much of that pith or whatever this is out of there so I don't dull the tip of the other one too much as I'm trying to pierce into it. And this is somewhat of a avant-garde uh, improv idea. So this, this may not work, uh, but like I said, worst case scenario, you can just dip the uncut end um, <laughs> into there and, uh, and write with it. So yeah, I'm just going to work at this for a bit. And then, so basically I'm, I'm working the, scratching the pith out with the, with the round end. And then I'm taking the sharp end and I'm just sort of hollowing out to make room for the ink. And something tells me that this is going to work as long as I'm very, very careful. And um, if you've got some leather gloves or something, I'm totally wearing leather gloves right now, even though you can't see them. I'm using all safety precautions. So now that I've got that shape and I've got a little bit of an... I guess you could call it an inkwell of sorts. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep twisting and and I don't wanna split the top. So I'm, I'm being very careful to stay on the bottom of, of this quill and I'm, I'm just sort of twisting so that I don't rupture and break the top and ruin what I'm working toward. So I'm just sort of working it back and forth making a spot for the for the ink. And I, I don't I don't think there needs to be too much room. Right now I'm I'm about I'm about that far in. And I I'm just gonna stop right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to very, very carefully work just rocking back and forth very, very carefully and I'm gonna scoop my hands away. And I'm going to turn this away from myself so that if it slips, I only get a fingertip and not a nose or something. So barely pushing, I, I split the quill on the knife. <laughs> I'm not sure how easy that is to see. But perhaps if I put my black phone up against it, it's not really making it any easier either. You have to take my word for it that the nib is split down the middle. And yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the flat part and to make it a little bit more flat so that it doesn't cut. And to do this, I'm I'm just going to shave 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 because I'm I can tell how brittle this is if I push too hard it's it, it'll break it. So I'm just going to sort of saw and slice until I get the edge that I want. I'm actually going to use a pair of scissors. Not everything has to be done in a medieval... I guess scissors probably existed in the medieval times. So. Now I have... Maybe I can use... Well, whatever. Hmm. Let's see. It's flat here, as you can see. And remember, I've already got the, the line. So, and as I'm testing this and I'm pushing on it, it does have some bend to it. So this, this might just work. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And I've got some black India ink here. Boy, this lighting is so bright. You'll just have to take my word for it. I've got some black India ink here. And I just, I keep it in this little... I call it my spell chest, but it's just it's just a lot of a lot of things that I've collected over the years. Um, I showed a video about my spell components. These are more herbs and things as opposed to 
seashells and driftwood and stuff like that. These are like patchouli and hisop and goat bone powder, um, allspice, spearmint, basil, bayberry, stuff like that. And I just keep the spell ink or the, uh, <laughs> the calligraphy ink in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few index cards so that the ink doesn't bleed through extremely quickly. Putting the knife up so that I don't accidentally step on it. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to write on this. Looks like I've got fingernails <laughs> sitting on the on the floor here from, from scraping that. So now I've got my index cards right here. I've got my India ink and we're going to test this out. So just dipping a little bit. We're going to see how this works. It looks to be holding ink relatively well. Oh, wow. That's actually working very, very well. I just drew a little, <laughs> little symbol here with it. And as you can see, it works pretty well. <laughs> so I just sort of uh, artistically, instinctively drew the sigil. Um, it feels pretty protective to me. So having drawn it with a porcupine quill, it feels even more protective. So I'm going to, and actually, yeah, you can see how, um, it, if you see the line there, how it drew it up into that into that nib um, really, really well. So I'm going to dip just a little bit more. And then I'm going to sort of take off the excess. And then I'm going to try to write my name. Okay, so the first thing that I'm noticing, I guess something I'm noticing is... If you try to go against the grain, it will peel back and splinter. So, and, and like I said, I know nothing about calligraphy. So probably writing as a calligraphist would, that won't happen. But um, yeah, I'm just going to try to write my name here. Wow. Okay, so it's not the prettiest name. Well, it's not that the name isn't pretty, but the rendition of it. But yeah, as you can see, this works relatively well. I'm I'm pretty pleased and I'm glad I followed my instincts with this one. So um, yeah, I uh, I recommend trying this if you have access to a porcupine quill. And uh, and you, you can actually make some ink, too, if I remember correctly, by taking lamp black, which is that stuff that accrues when a flame, um, it's like the soot from a flame. And you take that and I believe you mix it with, you can mix it with water potentially, but I think you mix it with alcohol and then you mix it with a little bit of powdered pine sap or something to give it a binding. Um, and that's probably an extremely primitive version, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna call this a success because um, as you can see, I've I've written it's so it's so bright with this with this lighting. I apologize, but um, there we go. A nice little protective glyph right there with my name. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to hold on to this because I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something cool. Even if you never do this yourself, um, you've learned another technique. So perhaps you can use this to your advantage in, in some way, shape or another. But uh, yeah, that's all for this one. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good rest of the day.